oh, we're going to do a video refuting this Calvinistic false doctrine of regeneration before faith. Because what the Calvinist basically believes is that this is a common error of Calvinism, by the way, too. They believe that regeneration from the Holy Ghost is, is the precursor to faith in Christ. Basically, you're regenerated first, and God gives you faith, which is totally false. This is blatantly contrary to the gospel and process of the sinner coming to Christ. First of all, here's how here's how the biblical means of it goes. Okay, and we're going to show that regeneration is after faith. Nobody has ever been regenerated before they had faith. So first of all, first the sinner hears the word of God and believes the record. John chapter five verse twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You know, plain and simple. You hear the word. Romans chapter ten verse 14 to 17. All right, accidentally pressed the wrong button there. Sorry about that. Uh, hit stop recording by accident. So going to be a hang of this, some of this webcam stuff. But like I said, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 17. How then shall I call on him, him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall, they t how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Uh, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Elias saith, Lord, who hath, believed, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay? Where is the regeneration coming first? It's not there. First John chapter 5, verse 10 to 13. You have to believe the record that God gave of his son. Plain and simple. First John chapter 5, verse 10 to 13. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, and he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son, of, he that hath, the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So we see this theme of of hearing the word of God and receiving the written record of the Son of God. Then the sinner obviously believes the gospel, plain and simple. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 13. Okay, go back to Romans 10, this time it's verses 8 down to verse 13. <clears throat> it says, uh, But what saith it? The word, is, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Also notice the wording of whosoever, you know, rich unto all that call upon him. Yet yeah, anyone can get saved. So it also goes against this Calvinist false doctrine of limited atonement. And here's the next verse. Uh, then the sinner obviously, the next step is the sinner obviously will trust in Christ as his Savior. Okay? And this verse here also refutes the Calvinistic false doctrine of limited atonement. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For therefore we both labor, we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. It's just that simple. You trust in Him; He's the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. See, one of the fault, the, the straw, and, you know, I know this video is not about limited atonement, but one of the straw man arguments that Calvinists will say is they'll accuse you of being a universalist if, if you say that all men can get saved. Well, this verse is a good way to answer them. He's the Savior of all men especially those who believe. Why? He's a savior, but if you don't believe, that doesn't really amount to much of anything. He's only this, he's only he only saves you from your sins if you believe. He is your savior, he died for your sins. I mean salvation is available for you, but it doesn't come into effect unless you believe. Plain and simple. So that's that's how you answer them on that. Then after this happens, after you put your faith and trust in Christ, then you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Okay? None of this happens before faith. The regeneration does not happen before your faith, plain and simple. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We just see the process, we just we, we see the process right here that we listed above. You hear the word of truth. You know, you hear the word of God. You believe in it, you believe the gospel, and you trust in Christ, and then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Okay? 
after that happens, not before. Nobody has ever been regenerated before they put faith in Christ. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 to 13, in and of itself, refutes this Calvinistic false doctrine. So don't be deceived by the errors of Calvinism. Uh, like I said, nobody in the history of the New Testament church has ever been regenerated before they put faith in Christ. That's a Calvinistic false doctrine. Uh, it also, you know, they'll say, oh, you, you deny the sovereignty of God. Well, the word sovereignty is not in the King James Bible, plain and simple. Uh, and how they define sovereignty of God is not how the Bible describes God's, you know, quote-unquote sovereignty. Because there is a, God is sovereign in a sense, but the Calvinistic definition of it is a twisting of that, which is a whole other issue in and of itself. But all these errors of Calvinism all come down to their denial of free will, plain and simple. You know, and by the way, no, I'm not Arminian. Okay, Arminianism is heresy as well. Arminianism is just as, just as heretical as Calvinism. It's a doctrinal false dichotomy, which I'm not going to get too much into that. But don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.